Okay. Uh, I cannot hear Jason. Jason, are you here? I don't hear him. I think it's he is offline. Okay. Uh, okay. And then, uh, guys, so we have no class this Wednesday because of a presidential election. I I probably I think that you probably know about it, and you probably know what is this. This one is actually tape measure or tape ruler, and I'm highly sure that you don't have one. Uh, so you may need to come to the lab. The back to the maker space and you, you need to borrow this one uh, for this week's assignment. So uh, what we are uh, what we are going to do is that so um, uh, Caroline, can you explain this week's assignment to Jason later? <laughs> yeah, I can. Okay, all right. So the assignment that uh, so we are we are going to talk about is uh, either it is augmented or virtual or extended, it's actually reality. So reality means it's a space. So what it means by is, so I kind of learned that. So I have collaborated with many computer scientists uh, about virtual reality and meta maker space. And, and I realized that uh, the one of the biggest problem of computer scientists or anyone who actually want to jump into this virtual or augmented reality, um, they don't know about reality. <laughs> That's the biggest problem that many people will see. So today, what, I, what I'm going to teach you is really the kind of the basic sense of space, how we feel space and how do we measure the space. And the, one of the basic 3D model of 3D space is, is called as bounding box. Uh, anyone heard about bounding box? So bounding box is a, a simply a geometrical, a simplest form of geometrical representation of an object. Meaning that, let's say we have a mouse. And as you say that this one is have some curve here, curved surface here, and there's a wheel here, and then this is kind of round, and there's a laser pointer coming out from the bottom side. So even the uh, smallest object or very popular object that you may see or may use every day is quite complex. So to represent this mouse object, instead of really using the real shape, we simply identify the kind of a box that can wrap around every, every um, geometry in it. And then that something can wrap around the outside the box of this mouse is called bounding box. So any object, any complex object, this can be represented as simply a very long, thin bounding box. And then this cylinder format also can be represented as bounding box. So that um, whatever you do, when you actually jump into a kind of virtual reality or augmented reality form, the first model you are going to make is a so-called bounding box model. Meaning that you, instead of really make all the details of geometries, you simply make a box of it. So basically you are going to place some boxes, uh, measures the width and length and height and simply place them in a space instead of really detailed object. So that's called bounding box model. And this one, if I kind of using a, a kind of like a kind of a architecture work, this is known as uh, LOD, level of detail, LOD 100 model. So LOD 100, LOD 200, the more detail, the more higher level you're going to use, it kind of, uh, you probably see the higher number of uh, LOD 500. If I just show you some little uh, quick uh, 
description about it. You can actually check about that uh, LOD would be 100 to 500. So this one is a kind of technical term. So you probably see that the simplest form of a tree model is known as level 100. And then level 100 simply has a box. That's it. It's called it conceptual box. So this is what uh, the first model you are going to build in Rhino. And what do you have to measure? is about your dormitory room. So you have to measure the width length of your dormitory room, and you have to measure the width length height of your bed or mattresses. What? And then, so uh, I will kind of introduce you the basic notions of basic concept of space that you feel every day is actually what is the what is the space that you basically you every day you touch it all the time what is the most frequently touched object you almost every day or all the time is a smartphone actually it's floor your life or any uh, anybody's or any life in the world is actually based on floor because can you imagine that without floor where you can stay? So all your um, perspective or perception of space depends on actually floor. And basically it depends on your eye level, so-called. So when you stand up, can you imagine where is your eye level? Actually, it is all deep. It's uh, basically the levels are different depending on your height. However, uh, in architecturally, uh, we generally locate the eye level at 1.5 meter. And then, probably Caroline and Jason, you may not be familiar with metric. So, you can actually use, you can use either inches and feet. However, unfortunately, you need to actually use this meter. So I hope this, this assignment can be a great opportunity for you to transform your uh, feet and inches unit into metrics. So what do you have to measure? I will, of course, uh, I will write this one uh, in the Facebook website in detail. Uh, so the assignment will be basically here in this Facebook. As I already posted the week one assignment here, I will upload the week two assignment here. And then uh, I will kind of, uh, after I explain today, the today's plan is that I will quickly explain about a really, little bit about the basics of space and the perception of scales. And then I will discuss about your final project very shortly because we have only one class this week. And then I will rediscuss about your final project next Monday, probably. Okay, so the basic unit is actually the basic elements that you feel every day is basically floor. And then actually, what is the, what is the second most important element of architecture that really define your perception of space, do you think? Can you imagine that? How do you feel that this space is really large or small, or this is really, uh, or, or let's say, oh, this is good space or bad space? Do you think, other than floor, what do you think is the most significantly influence your perception? And can you imagine why they, why people like the change of ground space other than your other engineering building? Do you know why this, why many people like this place? Can you imagine why many people like churches? Why they like stadium? Can you imagine? 
your height. Height is the uh, kind of second most important element. And these days, if you if you stay in more higher space, do you feel that you live, you kind of you feel like you are in more exotic or more significant space? Kind of you feel like because the height is the kind of very kind of expensive asset these days. And then actually later you feel the kind of the length or the depth of space and the width of it later. So your first assignment, you need to measure your room size as a box. So let's imagine, so now going back to uh, Rhino. So uh, do you install a Rhino today? So actually I want you to open it and then uh, is there anyone who have a problem in using Rhino today? Me. Oh, okay. So, uh, did you install Rhino 7 just temporarily? Actually, I tried to install, but um, the website doesn't work. Even Rhino 7 doesn't work? Uh, yeah. Really? Hmm. Uh, okay, let's discuss it later. But for today, it'll be very simple okay so let's I go back also have to a problems with rhino too uh what kind of problem do you have uh i don't really know I, my computer just won't open it uh okay. like i installed it so i don't know what the issue is mm. okay alternatively uh there are many free software uh i didn't really been by however uh, okay, so alternatively, if you cannot use your Rhino, uh, FreeCAD, can you use Free? Uh, okay, FreeCAD is a free software. Um, I will show you both of them. So, uh, Ellie and Carolyn, would you? Okay, I will show you. So, um, just just for this week only. There will be no problem at all using this one instead of Rhino. So, okay, so FreeCAD, you can just go to the webpage, freecadweb.org. I will type it here. And then you can actually download it depending on your uh, operating system. Uh, you can download it and then if possible, uh, any just one minor additional assignment for this week is installing Unity 3D on your computer. And Unity 3D, uh, does anyone who already have Unity 3D on your computer? Um, yes, oh, yeah. me. Okay, so so some of you are already ready. So if you're already ready, just update it. So have a latest version, and that's it. If you don't have one, just go to Unity 3D and just download a personal or student version, and that's pretty much good enough. So I just download FreeCAD. Um, so it, it's kind of the installation process uh, is quite straightforward. Just download it. Um, It's not that huge, so simply open it. And then you probably see this kind of installation window and just click next and next and install for anyone. And then just remember where the software will be installed. And then just next. And then just install, and that's it. pretty much that's it. It's 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 just easy. And then all the commands we are going to use is just simply box. And then for those who can use Rhino, let's just open uh, Rhino six. Mm. And then okay, so one thing. So we need to check. Uh, Unit, uh, as soon as we, as soon as you open a Rhino, so go to tool and then you can, you can probably select 
meter unit at the starting screen. However, if you have no chance like me, I will just simply change that the unit as meters and then just press OK. And then imagine that uh, you are going to measure the width, length, and height of your dormitory room. And then in this assignment, what is critical is actually the use of layers. So let's say I first start with changing layer names first. So maybe first uh, layer, I would say simply room. And then another room actually includes floor and ceiling and walls. So this may have almost everything and the largest uh, model you may going to make. And then probably the second one, I'm highly sure that if you live in a kind of legally approved living space, it's supposed to have a door. And then it's supposed, to, the space is supposed to have window. It's, it's legally, it's kind of, it's kind of must element. And then you may have bed, or some of you may have desk or not, but it's not so important. And then actually I want you to have your body. So let's say I just called it human. And then uh, let's just use uh, sub layer, or if you don't have sub layer, it's just okay. Then probably you may have head and then of course, a human may have a body and then probably have arms and probably legs. So this is so far uh, some basic element that defines our perception of space. And then I want you to actually make it for now. Um, Let's just, I'm just, okay. And then all the command we are going to use is simply this box command. So let's imagine that I don't know the size of your dormitory rooms. However, let's just say that I just simply use box and the starting corner is actually zero, zero, zero. I just type a zero and enter. And the other corner, please measure the width of your room. Let's say, it probably three meter. Remember that we are in meter unit. And then length, I don't know, but let's just say the four meter. And then the height of a room, probably uh, many Korean room may have 2.4 meter height. So this is actually, let's just say that for now, it's your uh, dormitory room size here. So now it's kind of like a, it's kind of, isn't it strange? Because you never perceive your room as an object like this. So now here, I'm kind of trying to show you something important aspect when you're working with either virtual or augmented or extended reality, which is actually camera. So actually the camera is actually where your eyes are located. And then actually that's the place where your headset will see the world. Uh, so actually, so I just can kind of just walk through inside of it. And actually probably this is the kind of the, the one I showed you in perspective is probably the way you see your room. However, you see, you probably see that something is strange, isn't it? And can you identify what makes you feel this room so strange compared to your general perception of room space? What is that make your perception of your room and this perception of your rooms are so different each other? Can you identify what defines it's, Because the it's empty now. Huh? Because it's what empty. Uh, I believe that many of your dormitory is empty, <laughs> relatively. Yes, actually, yeah, actually, Dutro, you're right. So let's add um, a mattress. Okay, so mattress, in general, you can measure your mattress size. 
And let's check about uh, what is the general size. So, okay, let's just check about what is the size of mattress. So a uh, bed sizes, and then I'm highly sure you may use a single mattress and single roughly 92 centimeter and 1.88 uh, centimeter. So just let's say one meter and two meter, just roughly, just for now, but I, okay. So in terms of precision wise, Please use, please use centimeter precision, meaning that if your mattress is also 188 centimeter, please write, please measure 3D model of 1.88 meter precision. So here again, precision is actually the list. Uh, precision is one centimeter. You don't really need to go to millimeter uh, unit. Uh, millimeter dimension in this in this week's in this week's assignment. So let's say that I will draw a mattress from zero, and then let's say um, the width is about one meter, and the length is one point eighty eight, and then roughly depending on your mattress height. So let's say that roughly sixty centimeter. So I would type zero point six. So this is roughly mattress, single a single mattress or single bed you may have, but still you think that something is wrong here. Can you still identify what causes this strangeness? So let's say you are in a room here. It's so weird, isn't it? The perception of a room is very different from the room look around your dormitory or your room, and then probably it will be quite different. And can you define, can you explain what causes this strange feeling? This is something you have to solve when you make any augmented or virtual reality project because you may want to make your virtual reality feels like real space. Because we are now in a third person perspective? Actually, this one is actually a third person perspective. <laughs> and the reason why is that because you are, uh, I'm wholly sure that you're kind of like a new generation who uses smartphone instead of uh, actually the, a conventional film camera. Anyone uses a film camera before? Actually, it is the lens, uh, lens effect. So the, diff and then this one is something you are going to change in Unity 3D later too. So if you check about uh, lens, uh, uh, sizes uh, or lens glasses, uh, camera lens sizes, camera lens uh, size comparison. Uh, when I start a camera, the standard camera lens size that we, my generation, uh, may use was roughly 25 to 50 millimeter cameras. Uh, let's take a look, let's find some images. So let's say that there are a lot of different um, cameras here. And then you see that the smallest one is Nikon 50 millimeter, 1.8D. And then if you go, you probably see the kind of variation of uh, lens diameters. So, so 14 to 24, 20 to 70 and 70 to 200 and 80 to 400. And then you probably uh, kind of a large cameras like here and whenever you see kind of like news media or kind of or other conferences or Olympics for well, the last winter Olympics, you probably see something like this. So why um, news reporters may like to use this kind of long lenses or big cameras. Do you know, can you guess why? which small cameras do not have. Because the size of 
the things that we see are more correct when when we use the first one i think uh yes and then uh we need to compare that's correct so because the, the difference is between our eyes and the camera lenses so uh, eye and eyes and camera lens comparison so if you kind of take a look at about uh, our eyes and cameras uh, there's no a really good one here however in general the there is no really good comparison here however our eyes is more close to somewhere between 15 to 20 camera lenses size so to change that go to properties which is i'm select perspective and properties of in property uh, properties here current lens lenses is 50 millimeter if i change it to 20 this one is make a little bit smaller however if i approach it this one give us a little bit wider angle and actually you probably may or may not think that depending on your personal experience so i even change it to 10 millimeter and probably this one is probably close to what you see a room space or maybe 15. So um, your assignment, uh, okay, so here's a, a way. So your, your assignment is find a camera lens length that do you think is the most closest to your eyes is actually your assignment. So the way how you do that is Compare, to open your monitor and see it, and then place yourself to a corner of your room and try to see it, and then try to measure the oblique line that from your room to monitor's room and compare it, and try to change, try to match those two together. And then when you do that, I recommend for you to use only single eye instead of two eyes that actually give a very different feeling about the space. So that's kind of another assignment. So first thing is, so, and then another component in your room is you are going to, you are going, you need to measure window and a door. So door probably, uh, when you draw a door, so we only use box command. Uh, I don't know where your door is located, but probably you need to draw your door. And then this is a little bit too big. So try to measure actually your door frame size. Uh, many door frame size would be just uh, maybe 15 centimeter. And then probably the, and then the width is roughly many doors simply use 0 0.9 meter. And then, and then the kind of the width of door probably, uh, it really depends on door size, but now I just drew it about uh, 0 0.2. Uh, okay, one more time, 0 0.9. Uh, okay, I just try one more time. So I draw a box and then other zero, uh, 0 0.9 for width. And then 0 0.2 for height. Uh, length and then probably many door will be 1.8 or somewhere around it. So probably and then to move around these boxes, you can just simply select it and then you can actually move around or you can simply type move and select the object and select origin point and two point. That's a way, a way of uh, moving it. But this is not, you don't really need to make it really precisely. This one is just, is it just exercise of how you feel your space, your dormitory room, and try to make a virtual space out of it. That's it. 
So you don't really need to make any details of it. And then you may have a window probably, I don't know where it would be, but window size similar to door, however, may have different height. And then probably it will be somewhere in the middle of your another uh, side of a wall. So this is the kind of basic element of architecture, which is floor ceiling wall and door window, and then one minimum of furniture you may have. So this is your uh, quick assignment this week. And then here's another thing. So I told you that we see, we perceive a space depending on our height. Uh, let's just see together that if I move it, so I kind of like by shifting right mouse button, if I lower my eye level, because as you probably see that the, there is a black line behind it, which is horizontal line, which is our eye level. If I lower this eye, eye level, you feel like this space is really huge. Basically, this eye level is probably, I don't know, a dog's eye level or cat's eye level. So this is how a dog or a dog can feel about your dormitory size. But imagine that if I kind of make it eye level higher somewhere in the middle of it, then probably this is somewhere my son's eye level, which is the, you just see that his eye level is roughly about one meter. And this is how my son feels about this space. And probably your eye level is pretty much higher somewhere here. And then I don't know how tall the tour is, but let's just imagine that the tour is very tall guy and his eye level is somewhere here. Then you probably feel that how tall guys feel the same space, how they feel about it. So feel like this one is very, I don't know, cramped area. So I kind of, you probably down, I just want you to feel about this how we fill this space and your space around you. And then how can we make a 3D space that is most close to our perception of space? So this is your assignment here. It will be quick. So because there's really nothing uh, you need to do much. Uh, any question about this assignment? And then uh, if you can, uh, it is also highly recommended that if you have a table, just add uh, one more uh, desk here too. So probably many desks have a size of roughly, I don't know what I have is roughly width is uh, zero point, uh, let's say 0 0.5 or 1.5 and width is uh, 0 0.75 and the height is roughly 0 0.8. Uh, so this is roughly kind of uh, the most uh, common desk sizes I have around here. To rotate a geometry, you can simply type rotate. And then you need to click the center of an object. And then you can click shift button. And then if you move it, you can actually move rotate exactly 90 degrees. So this is pretty much easy and straightforward. And then uh, when you use Rhino in the perspective view, if you use right mouse button, it is an orbit. But if you press shift, it is, a, it is panning. And when you do that, and also you can zoom it out using uh, scroll wheel on your mouse and then you can actually using shift button. So kind of like you can decide where your camera is located. So in the perspective view, you don't see any camera object. However, you can place a camera because this is basically what you see. And if you go to property, do you see here camera section, X location, Y location, and G location? And G location set, 
the G height is actually now 1.1 meter. You can change this one to 1.5 meter. And now you see that this one is actually 1.5. And you can actually kind of move around it by moving this number is changed. And actually roughly now I'm moving down a little bit. And this one is roughly 1.5 meters. So you can move like this or while you are selecting this perspective view uh, on this com command line, you can type camera and enter. And then you probably can read that camera object is hidden. And now you can click show. Then now you probably see this camera object on the left side of view. And this one is also, you probably will see this one in Unity 3D2. Any camera object has start point, viewport, and this one is target point. And then if I select this start or camera point, it says, this one is actually where your camera is located. You can also move this point only. So I type M or move and enter. And then in the front view or, or in the top view, I click one for start point and the next one. And then I can more precisely move around the camera point. And then I can select here. Actually, there are two points. You can also move, also type move and also one point, and also you can move around the target point. So you can actually controlling the camera object in this way. And if you change, so for now, uh, you know that this camera, I know that the yellow, by know that the color is yellow here. The lens is actually, um, I click perspective and lens, lens is 15. Now I change to 20. So now you can play with the kind of lens lenses. And then this X location, Y location, G location is location of the camera point. And this X, Y, G is actually the location of a target, which is the center point of this other side of camera. So you can actually numerically can change it too. So for those who Rhino users, uh, please upload this Rhino file, that's it. Uh, and then uh, one thing you need to be careful is make sure that change the name of this perspective to, you can change the name of it by selecting uh, viewport properties, uh, you can actually uh, quickly change that here. So here I would call it my saved or my camera. Then actually your viewport name is changed to my camera. The reason I ask you to change this one is perspective or kind of default name of it. So you accidentally click perspective, you can you may screw uh, up the the location of a camera you made for a while. But if you have your first camera saved, then actually you can simply select uh, name. You can go to set view and name the views, and then you can actually select. The one, actually I lost it. So sorry, that, actually I lost it. The way, the proper way of saving the name is not simply changing here. Actually you save it here. So here I just say as my camera. If you have multiple, I just say as camera one, then actually this one will be the named view. You can keep it. Two, again, just show you one more time to save your view. Again, this one is also changed to the default camera lens, which is the perspective. I change it to 20 and I change the location. Once you update it, you have to save it one more time. 
because this one is edited. So go to set view and my name and name the views. And I would save one more time. And I save this one as my camera two. Because camera one is actually saved view that we did it kind of like two minutes ago. So please save your camera into a name that you want. So this is your assignment. And one more thing, okay. So now please measure the head size of it. And then probably you can locate, uh, okay, so now, and then please make or layer, make the layers of object in a good name. So let's say this one is window. So I change that the layer of this window is not a bat, but window. And the table, the, uh, the, the layer of a table supposed to be in table. So I create another new layer and then name it as table. And then I change the layer as table because this one is extremely important because once you work with Unity 3D, you are not going to select object by object. You simply select the object, target object by their names. So again, and this one is your bad. So bad is in a, its good layer. Uh, what is not, and then probably the door supposed to be in door layer. And then one thing you have to do is that on the camera location, please locate your head. For example, let's say that uh, if, if, you can, if something has changed to return to the saved name, the view go to, again, always go back to set view. And then your camera, my camera too is always, you can select it here. So select it one more by do, what, what is doing, what we are doing now is that we are actually saved the location of a camera. And then as you see here is the camera point is actually behind the wall. So actually I want to move it a little bit inside of a room. So this one is actually, I locate properly your head and please locate your head to the camera point. So I said, measure your head and then I don't know the exact size of your head, but make this box that represent your head to match the head size of your head. And then I move it to the camera point. Uh, and then accordingly, actually this one, as you see that this one is a little bit too low. So first I will update my camera view. So now I will probably, so by watching top view and front view, I locate a camera into the position here. However, the height is a little bit too low. So I move it up and this one can be seen by set camera two and property. Okay, so camera two and the G location is 1.1. So I kind of move it to 1.5. So this is in general, but if your eye height is 1.6 or 1.7, it doesn't really matter. Just locate somewhere near your height eye level. So this one is actually the view. And then I move the head body to near your head area. And then please measure your body trunk and then draw it into below your body. And I also like to move it to below your head. And then please add your leg. And I'll move it to near your body. And then probably instead of making a new one, I just copy and paste. And then your legs. And then move your legs to your, your body. 
And I don't know whether you are familiar with this one or not. Do you probably see this kind of human figure quite many times if you play with Roblox? I don't know, are you familiar with Roblox? It's one of the most popular game among teenagers. Um, I kind of show you what this is. So you can check Roblox game. I think this is one of the most successful game platform in the world now, I think. And actually, I don't know whether you know it or not. There's a, you can actually, there's a so-called Roblox studio, and then you can make a game using those Roblox studio too. But I don't really see, um, so Roblox Studio is almost exactly quite similarly look like uh, Unity 3D. And then you can actually create a, a good game in Roblox Studio actually. Okay, uh, so this is actually roughly uh, this week's assignment. So you are going to make a virtual, very simplified version of you. So please measure your width and length of your body, of course your um, your, your legs and your arms and legs too, and also your head too. So it will be fun exercise. Um, any questions so far about this one? So it will be actually quite easy. So there will be no problem. So this one is actually a fun part. And uh, okay, so I'm highly sure that you're familiar with Unity. And if you're not, uh, there's another quick assignment because we have no class. Uh, there are quite many things that I have to explain about Unity, for example. So let's say that uh, how familiar you are about Unity. So other than Ali, other than Ali, uh, Dutur said and Ishan said and Kelly, you, you three said that you have an experience with Unity 3D and made, made the game before, right? I don't. So, no, I didn't. Oh, no, not at all? Yeah, How, no. It's no. Uh, James, so you have no experience at all? Uh, okay, so no shake hands. This is I, Jason, yes do this <laughs> okay all right okay so then i will then i have to say okay i'll just then jump into unity 3d uh just for now so this is unity basically but you have seen unity before right okay so i just kind of like uh, kind of a quick uh introductions of unity for now okay so to start to unity I just turn it off. Uh, what you have to do is you have, so this week, please install Unity 3D this week. So if you want to download a fresh Unity 3D, Unity, so simply search Unity download. Oh, oh okay, uh, no, before doing this, uh, we need to go through uh, for Ellie and Carolyn. So let's say that, okay, so this one is, um, Free cat and just finish and then I'll just open a uh, free cat for now. Actually, um I never work with the camera of uh free cat 3D. Uh, so let's work on it. So for Caroline and Ellie, you can download free cat. Uh once you are familiar with one cat modeling software and then you know the principles of 3D model making, you can be familiar to any other 3D software. Basically, they share uh, common features. So I just simply click new project. And then on the right side of it, this one is slightly uh, different from Rhino. However, you can switch to, if you, uh, can you see this icon on side of it? You can see this one is isometric view. Okay, let's just create a box for now. So FreeCAD, in FreeCAD, 
there are many different versions. So I would restart. So I would say new file. Uh, and then here are many, you can actually open many projects here. And then here you can actually click a basic part. Uh, okay, so the first process you have to do is, so FreeCAD is kind of general 3D software, meaning that you can use it for drafting, architecture, or pots, or robot. So actually there are many uh, subcategories inside of it. I recommend for you, uh, Caroline and Ellie, to use architecture, and then I click it, because then actually you will have some kind of different sets of menu. So now you probably see that the top layers have a little bit different menu before, and then you probably see different windows here, and then actually you also see that units are a little bit different. So now let's change units first. So to change unit, uh, I would go to preference or let's say, oh, this one is Korean version. I'm so sorry, but you can download English. Uh, can I change it to English version? How can I change the language first? Okay, I'll change the language first. Great, give me one second. So I change to uh, English. And then uh, apply. Okay, so now I'm in English. Okay, so if, uh, to change language, go to edit. And then to change also unit, I'll go to preferences. And then inside these preferences, uh, if you go to... Oh, I didn't use it for a long time. Sorry that um, probably uh, unit is in the end. And then here unit system is standard, which is millimeter kilogram. So I change it to the second one, which is MKS unit, which is meter kilogram. So I change it to meter and then apply and then okay. So now I am um, in meter unit. However, this one doesn't really change that much. Okay, so now to change view, you probably see here that this one is front view, top view, side view, back view, bottom view, and left side of view. And then this one is isometric. So you can change view here. And then to create an object, you can create a war or like this. However, you can actually, uh, let me see, box. You can create a box somewhere. Uh, box supposed to be this box. Okay, I'll just drag the standard model making to the below here. Create an external reference object. Mm. This one is structure object. Um, there must be a box. I tools. Box. Um, let me see. This is point. There must be a tool to throw basic boxes. Snap, these are object snaps. Where is the, oh. okay, so I just create an object war. First point of war, sorry that I lost where box is. Uh, give me one second, sorry for that. Uh, free can free cat. Um, I so how will I look? Oh, so okay. So this is a box and placement horizontal. Uh, 
sorry that I I kind of didn't use this one for a while. I forget how to make a box. Uh, here is a simple one: word structure, project level. Mm. How can I help Caroline and Ellie? Mm. Okay, forget. Let's forget about this one. So, Caroline and Ellie, uh, would you mind install a Rhino Seven Evaluation version? So, Evaluation version is you can actually download it for free, and then you can use it for ninety days. And then would you, and then if you have a problem, would you stop by Makerspace with your computer? And for Ali, I will kind of find another laptop for you. And then for Carolyn, what kind of computer are you using? Your own la personal laptop? Yeah, uh, it's, I don't know. It's just like a Windows 10 HP laptop. Okay. so. Would you mind to stop by today or tomorrow to the makerspace? Then I will check that how to fix your uh, software problem. Okay. I, that would be best. So you can actually use today's tutorial. Okay, forget about FreeCAD. Um, uh, okay, so that's it. That's kind of assignment for today. Okay, then I'm kind of jumping to, okay, so uh, I will show you very quickly. So actually, when you have your object, all you have to do is, uh, so all you have to do is select the geometries, and then I export them as, okay, so now what we need to first learn is again, okay, let's start by Unity very quickly. So this one is known as Unity Hub. And then once you download uh, Unity, you just go through how to install Unity Hub and other stuff. You just, just follow next to next and just follow the tutorials that you are going to see from the screen, that's it. So this one is as easy as Rhino installation. And then in Unity Hub, this one is basically controlling all your assets, library or other additional assets to be used uh, quests or tolerance or magic lip that the headset that you are going to use. For now, all we have to do is just simply click new project. And then you can choose either 2D, 3D or uh, 3D sampling. And, and then actually, uh, I still recommend to try 3D sample HDRP high resolution. This one is quite amazing, but for now, I just click 3D core, just simply to show you how to install Rhino object in Unity 3D. And this is quite heavy. Uh, Unity is always quite heavy and need to take, uh, need to wait uh, for a while, it's, but still it would not be that long. Okay, so I just open a new project using Unity Hub. And then, uh, and then there are really tons of things to explain in Unity 3D. So um, I can, of course, I will explain very quickly. I can give you a kind of like crash course on what they are. Still, I want you to go through. So if you go to, once you go to Unity 3D and then um, go to unity.com, uh, you need to create a, you need to register account and then you need to sign in. And then uh, I already registered and then I already signed in. So now the icon here uh, will show that depend your first and last name. And then I strongly recommend for you to go to learning, learning and then uh, if you go to learn Unity, and there's actually online learning. If you go to stop learning, and there are, then there will be, the first one is called Unity Essentials. 
uh, prim, uh, I don't know which one is the first one. I think Unity Essential is the, really the basic thing. And then I really want you to go through this Unity Essentials this Wednesday or this weekend. Uh, this will take about, I don't know, depending on your background, it may take, if you are experienced, it may take one hour. If you are really beginner, it may take two or three hours. But I, I, I would not think that it may longer than two, hour, two, three hours. So if you go to Unity Essentials, uh, I already finished it. It will kind of explain all the concepts of scenes or interfaces or other basic concepts. What is the real time thing? What is game engine? So kind of, I hope you to go through the basic Unity Essentials because uh, there are too many things to explain because I will go through it one more time with me. However, I strongly recommend for you to go through and then at least finish this Unity Essentials. Uh, what, uh, uh, and then I personally think these are really great, I have to say. Uh, actually, I didn't really completely finish it, but uh, at least, uh, actually I switched to Unity Essential level two. I just kind of quickly go through, and which was really great. So I kind of want you to finish at least uh, Unity Essentials one as a kind of like a preview or, uh, or review. Okay, so uh, this is a kind of like a Unity view. It's kind of really kind of pretty empty, nothing is in it. Uh, and then if I got a little bit explains about it. So there are file, edit, asset, game object, and kind of this kind of thing. And these four things are your interface with a scene. And there are, two scenes in Unity. One thing is actually these are basic scene. And if you use your, okay, so first of all, you probably see that there's a hand and then arrows. This one is move to rotation, scale, and those things, but we rarely use it. But however, we heavily use this kind of uh, hand, which is actually uh, panning orbit. If you use art shift, this one is zoom in and out. And then this one is orbit. And then you probably see there is two default assets, which is main camera and directional light. I will explain later what these are. But one of the biggest challenge you may face from now on is that uh, the coordinate system in Unity and then the coordinate system of the rest, all the rest are different. So how they different? is actually, um, I need to explain one thing. So now uh, I want you to see my hands from now on. Okay, so do you see my hands? So uh, as you see that, uh, if, I, if you see the word as, I don't know, Western people or non-Western people, or let's just see that um, kids and others, so we can actually dissect this word or man or female. So, and then this word is filled with people who understand the whole word using Okay, so this is my right hand, right hand coordinate system. And there are another group who uses the left hand coordinate system. And then uh, Unity uses left hand coordinate system, but the, the rest, all the rest of 3D modern software uses right hand coordinate system. So this was the, your first huddle to face with. So now what I'm going to do, I will locate the sum on the right side of it. So like this, I don't know whether, so I'm kind of locating the second finger in front of me and then some on my right side. And then I count this one as from my sum, I kind of write down this one as X, Y, Z. So basically this one is the word that you see in all or the three dimensional software. And then the Unity exceptionally actually reversed it's just kind of like, it's just simply um, mirrored, only uh, kind, of, uh, kind of this way. So what happened here is, so let's say that X is on my right side and Y is moving toward outside of me and the G is moving up and down. So let's go back to Rhino. So 
can you see my screen? Okay, I will share it. Okay. So now as you see in the top view, as you see that the red line is X and the green line is Y. So basically this one is exactly look like this from the screen. So X is right way and then green line Y is moving toward the upside of a screen, but this one is horizontal. And then G is up side is. So this one is how the 3D coordinate system works in Rhino. But I told you that Unity is left-hand coordinate. So to match this one to the uh, Unity, what happened is that, so I will kind of match Unity's system to Rhino's system. So as you see, if I kind of lined up X, let my left hand X to right hand X, you see that Y is reversed, but still G is the same. So only one thing that you remember, the difference between Rhino and Unity is that Y will be flipped. So if you are kind of confused right now, simply remember that Rhino's Y will be flipped. Can you remember that? Please nod. <laughs> so what will happen in this view is that once we export, so now remember that our human body in this Rhino file is upside. And then our door is in the upside way. But once I exported this one to Unity, the human figure and window will be located because the Y is mirrored upside down. What happened is, it's exactly the same thing with I rotate 180 degrees. So it will be imported like this. Can you understand it? Please say yes. <laughs> So uh, this is the first the, the first hurdle you'll have. But once you are fam familiar with this kind of inverted Y system, you'll be quite free. So this is the I've guaranteed that this is the first hurdle you'll have, and this will be soon disappeared. Okay. So now I will show you. Okay. So in Rhino, and it, this is the same thing with once we use 3D Studio Max, Maya, and all other software, this will happen. So I kind of want you to be familiar with it. So again, I save this one, I, I called and then I export selected. And on my desktop view, I just say, this one is actually test room. Okay, I'll share the screen. Uh, okay, so I'll come back to Rhino. So again, I show you one more time that once everything Y up word in Rhino, will be imported like on a zero, that it will be imported like this. This one is what I'm telling you. Okay, so I'm going back to original location. So I just select geometry. To export this geometry, I export to select it. Uh, and then I just save as test room. And then I strongly, you can actually use another file format too, but so far 3D Studio has worked the best so far. So I just save as 3DS and then I save them. And then, so for now, I will explain this part later, but just for now, I just save as okay. And then my Rhino says file successfully saved. So this one is saved. So in Unity, so I'm switched to Unity view. Uh, So here now I'm come back to Unity. So to import the geometry, uh, so I'm kind of a little bit slightly explain what these are. So for now, this one is a scene view, which is basically this one is the window, same thing that uh, we see in Rhino. Basically this is uh, showing what it is. And there's another view, which is actually a game view, which is once you play, play this one, we have nothing yet, so we don't, uh, so this one is actually game view. What it means is that this one shows what a camera is seeing. 
So basically you can understand that this play view is what camera see. So basically you can understand that this one is the perspective view in Rhino. And once you click one more time, then you can come back to scene, which is basically the view that this, you can actually consider this one is actually X, Y view, whatever working view in Rhino. Okay. And then here you, again, you see that main camera is here. And then if I click directional light, you probably see that you see on the right side of it, this one is called inspector. And then you see that when I click directional light, this one is changed into directional light. And then if I select main camera, then it shows that main camera. So this one is the same thing with uh, property in Rhino's window. So it shows all the detailed information of a selected object or selected asset if I borrow the terms from Unity. Are you okay so far? Okay. Uh, again, so what I'm saying is that, so if I a little bit take a look at about main camera, the position is zero, one, minus 10. Means that, so if I a little bit change the view, I click the Y, and then what it means is that, so as you see that, uh, X is on the right way, and G is actually this way, and then Y is up, because uh, this one is actually left side coordinate system. And now, uh, as you see, if I zoom out, as you see that this is the camera angle that you probably, this one is looks very similar to the camera view we saw in Rhino. So what it means is the location of camera is X is zero, Y is one, meaning that one meter above. So I want to change the, what the number we use. So 1.5 I will use. And then G is minus 10. So actually this one is from zero point. This one moved back minus 10 meter away. And then if I take a look at about directional light, just take a look at it. The position is zero, X is zero, Y is three, and Z is zero. And actually this one is called directional light. This one is actually, it, the location of the light, it doesn't really matter. I will explain this one later. Uh, I know there are too many things I have to explain, but I will try to make it as easy as possible. Trust me. Okay, so now here, uh, now, so this one is hierarchy. Hierarchy means this one is similar to layers that we used it in Rhino. So this one is that main camera is located here and directional light is here. And below this one is, and then I explained that this one is hierarchy and this is meter center one is uh, scene. And then there's inspector, which is similar to property in Rhino. And below is called project. And project is basically uh, folders that you showing that where all the external files are, meaning that you can just think of it as a kind of like for, uh, exactly the folder in Windows. So here, so far, I have two folders. One is asset folders and the other is packages folder. Uh, packages folders are actually for uh, the live external libraries such as packages are necessary to be used for Oculus headset or other HoloLens headset. And it, these are, or this is a folder where you need library for that. And then assets is actually the basic folder that we want to save all our files in. So what I'm going to do, I will simply, I will, our file, Okay, I want to show my screen instead of right now. So I show uh, my screen one more time. Okay. So now you can see Unity and then I open on Explorer. And then what I'm going to do is in the desktop folder, which I saved the test room 3DS file, which is test, test room. Mm. Test room. 
So test the space. Test, test. Uh, where is, oh, here's the test room file. I just saved it from Rhino. Can you see that? And then I dragged this file into this asset folder. And then what it means is that this one is actually what happened is this one is actually subfolder on my project, but that doesn't mean that this is located in my scene. And then I will move this test room. Actually, you can actually move it to either in the screen or either in this hierarchy folder, but I prefer to locate it hierarchy folder because I want to clean out where my files are. And then if you, I click this test room and then if you press F, oh, I changed the name. So I just click this once and then I click F. Okay, so here, this is the, uh, uh, and then this is the object and test room is the little one here. Okay, so now it's working. So F is actually known as focus, which once you select something, if you press F, then actually it will highlight it. So now this one is the object that we will have. So now, uh, now you see that this one is uh, kind of showing like this. So now I kind of little bit move my camera inside of it. And now you see that this one is similar to what you have seen it. But as you seen in the top view, okay, I just intentionally delete, uh, it is bounded for now. I just delete that for, okay. Children of officer be deleted, move to confirm. Ah, okay. So for, ah, okay. So here is the location of it. And then uh, as you see here, this one you can change to shaded view wireframe view or shaded wireframe view or render pass. This one is similar to the visualization style in Rhino. So I click wireframe. And this one is a bit not so clear. However, can you see that? Uh, my mattress is here. Uh, this one is very difficult to see. However, can you see that the people, human figure is located here. And then door is located here below. And then mattress is located here and window is located here. So if I go back to Rhino, as I explained, as you see that human figure is based on the zero coordinate, human figure is center top and then door is top right side of it. And then once you import it, Unity will be human figure is right side of it from the center and then window is here. So basically this is what will happen that you export from Rhino and import it in Unity 3D. Uh, not a great solution. So I will kind of like try to visualize a well, little bit differently. So I just go to very quickly, I explode it. Because instead of having a box, I delete the ceiling. So this one will be seen like this. So now you probably see, I just kind of removed the ceiling part and I export it one more time as uh, test room two and 3DS and I save it. And then come back to Unity. I just delete everything. Also this one too. Okay, and then I open the test room two. Uh, uh, test room two. Okay, so test room two is saved here. I bring it to asset. And then I just bring it to my scene. And then probably if I see it more shaded view, now you see that this is more clear to see that. So now, you just kind of, the coordinate systems are all different. However, uh, what you remember is that uh, Unity's coordinate system uses left hand coordinate system. And then this one, uh, that this, if you kind of take care about the simple, this simple shift, which is Y up is Y down in terms of X, Y, Z, then everything will be fine. So this is what will happen. 
uh, directional light. Okay, uh, I think this one is overwhelming some of you, uh, probably uh, some of you. So kind of, I think I call it, uh, this one is kind of roughly uh, that you, uh, what we are going to do very soon. Uh, and then uh, look at, let's kind of do it um, just one more thing. So, okay. Let's take a look at about this main camera. So camera is, as you see that, this one is located here. I click main camera. And then this one, second one is move tool. So I'll move this one somewhere here. So now this one is close to the one we located in Rhino. Uh, but for about the, and then as you see here, changing about the property of main camera will be another long story, but field of view is a similar to the camera, that camera angle we changed in Rhino. But we are actually, this one is actually simplified the camera. So that's why you can change the angle from wide and low. However, we are going to use a physical camera and the focal length will be as, what if we use, we use actually 20 in Rhino and then probably this is similar to what we have seen in Rhino's angle. And the rest, rest of it, I probably explain uh, next tape week. Uh, so, but this so far, I just quickly introduced about, so if you actually play play button to view a game view, uh, this one is actually similar to what we have. I will explain about how to set up the materiality next week. That's another long story, unfortunately. Okay, and then uh, I hope this one a little bit solve your curiosity about Unity 3D. If I take, if I a little bit uh, touch a little bit about camera side, clipping planes is actually a camera view that how far or how near you can see. So far is actually 1000 meter away. So what if we, change this one into five meter, as you see that this one far view is coming very near. And then if I change to four meter, this one go to a little bit close to the camera point. If I change to three, and as you see that after the object, after this clipping plane is disappeared. So this one, I just roughly changed to four, this is kind of set it as long as uh, the room size of it. And then near view is actually set as the view object started, and but I just simply set it this one as zero. So you can see everything in front of your camera. That's actually near view, far view. Uh, other stuff, and then I will cover uh, next week. But for this weekend, all you have to do, so this one is just kind of showing the relationship between Rhino and Unity. And I just kind of touched the really the tip of the iceberg. Uh, but uh, once uh, maybe, I don't know, some of you may be overwhelmed. Some of you maybe this one is, I covered almost nothing. However, I will just cover it very slowly. So I hope you not to be stressed and then we just go very, very slowly. Uh, uh, I mean, if you maintain your uh, focus, uh, I appreciate it, but I, I, I'm barely sure that you're born out. <laughs> because the reason why is that um, the uh, augmented reality uh, virtual reality is uh, the world of augmented is, is really huge, I have to say. And it, this is just the first step. Uh, so I hope that, but the, we are just going very slowly. So, and then what we are going to do is not that deep. So don't be stressed, <laughs> I hope, but I'm guaranteed that it will be very fun. 
and as and then uh, as a kind of like um, so um, for example, I, I guarantee that it will be really fun. <laughs> if you simply uh, if I open, uh, I actually so another so your assignment is make measure your room and then make simply your room size of its dimensions and make a your first a virtual space object of your room with bounding box modeling method, which is level of detail 100. And then second assignment, I strongly recommend for you to go to Unity Learner, the uh, unitylearn.unity.com and go through the basic Unity essentials. The, these are very good, I have to say. And then I just kind of uh, cover the half of it so you you will be uh, you will accelerate you will accelerate your learning curve while you're learning this material and uh if you actually and there you can actually make a very um small game which is micro unity uh, micro game so uh you can you pro you probably go through one of these examples include a lego micro game which is a playing card so I guarantee this will be quite fun too. So enjoy your exercising, you need to learning. And then another one I like to share is if you simply open a uh, new project, I, I was highly surprised that how easy, how easy it is to make a one extremely high quality. So I just, I simply open 3D sample scene uh, you can actually take advantage of using this template and simply uh, replace geometry, that's it. Um, I'll show it. Uh, this one. I'm changing the screen. Okay, just change to here. Now, so you see that I'm opening a high quality, okay. You may miss it. So this one is a new project and high quality uh, project template. That's it. So I actually I hope you to spend playing around with Unity a little bit. And if you are having a low performance laptop, you guys are all highly welcome to come to Makerspace. We have a quite, we have several desktop with a quite a good graphic card and high and i7 with uh, relatively very good CPUs. So you are highly welcome to come to Makerspace and use those computers to make your project here. Because uh, you probably need a good computer to play with Unity. And then you're also highly welcome to come to Makerspace and have fun with uh, Chrome uh, Quests and HoloLens or headsets here. Okay, so I'm still opening a, a high quality template. So this is just one template you can play with and again, you can replace geometries you made in Rhino and then you can simply replace geometry here. If you just press play button, this one is high definition render pipeline. Uh, uh, regarding pipeline, there are another long story to explain. So basically, um, I don't know whether you see, okay, so uh, this one is actually uh, one of the template that we, what we are going to cover. I'm so amazed by that. This is unbelievable that this is real time rendering of a 3D virtual space that you see light and shadow and kind of half translucent and this kind of, uh, oh, there's even bug inside of it. Uh, flying around inside of this glass box. Can you see that? And little dust in here. 
And architecturally, um, yeah, this kind of lighting effect on real time. So what we are, we are going to walk through is, yes, so this kind of reflection, uh, like several years back, this one was really, only small number of people can make it. But this one is kind of like so-called democratized, meaning any beginners can make this kind of high quality games these days. Uh, so enjoy the other samples too. Um, okay, so pretty much that's it for today. And then do you have any questions so far? Okay, so enjoy. Uh, I mean, really, uh, this one is really a new world of uh, fun part. <laughs> All right. But the assignment itself will be very straightforward and easy. Uh, Jason, do you have any question? Oh, yeah, I was just going to ask, is there a way that like, I know last time we went in person, is there a way we could do that? Or is there still like COVID restrictions? That would be really nice to like start working together with like. Uh, can you say one more time? The link was a little bit, I lost you. Oh, sorry. My internet's really bad. Is there a way to like do this class in person and use uh, like those computers? Because oh, yeah, today absolutely. I was trying to so, use Unity. Yeah, ex absolutely. So, okay. Uh, I'll turn another. Okay. So, all right. So, um, you're highly welcome. There is one computer here. Uh, these are quite good. So this one is open. You can use it. And I am wearing a mask to go to the, another room. And then as, uh, as you visited last time, You can use these two curves. Mm -hmm. So uh, there is one, you can actually use this computer and monitor and there's desktop to there. There are two desktops below. Uh, there's one more. So, so far you have, oh, so, and then uh, this place will open nine to 6 PM every day, Monday to Friday. And then there's another one more. There's another supercomputer here, which is actually this one, which is connected to this large monitor. So basically there are three computers here and another one in that room. So I don't know, but um, do you think, and then we basically need, so Ali is actually, Ali is in my lab. So he has his own computer. So basically we have three computers here. So you, you are highly welcome to come here computers. And actually you, there, you can actually, the unities are insert there. And then again, you, you are welcome to use headsets and then build and upload there. So again, I'm, I'm, I'm serious. So you are welcome to come here and work here. Oh, and then I just have one more question about like, uh, once we finish the room in Rhino, is there a specific format you want us to upload it as? I know you were talking about like the Unity. Oh yeah, like, so as I- You want it to be uh, that. Oh yeah, as I told you, you can actually, uh, maybe I go a little bit too fast. In Rhino, all you have to do is actually select your geometries. I will switch uh, screen. Uh, So in Rhino, you simply select it, and then you need to export selected, 
and then simply save it as 3ds. Okay. Then actually, uh, then to if you want to test it in Unity in your computer, uh, as uh, as I showed you before, simply open an empty Unity. Uh, here, I just simply show you one more time. So. Uh, I need to open another new empty project. And then when you open it, open, I just open 3D core. Okay, um, I'm waiting a little bit. If you want to test it, simply open a new project and then select 3D core and create project. So in an empty project, just simply open File Explorer and then they're running Unity and oh, Zoom is quite heavy. Okay, so just open your ex file explorer, drag the exported STL file to asset and bring this asset to the screen. And you can actually locate it, but I don't recommend this method, which is you are actually locating this geometry on a random place. So I actually prefer to locate it in this hierarchy folder and then actually the location of the, it will maintain its location from uh, Rhino. So actually I strongly recommend simply drag this one to this hierarchy uh, location. And then other than the upside is reversed. Uh, we mean the Y axis is reversed. Everything is in exactly same location. So is it, Clear, Jason? Yeah, thank you. Okay, so if you have any, uh, if you missed some process in the middle of it, just I will upload the recorded uh, today's lecture on a Facebook, probably the end, the, end of, the end of today. So check about the Facebook today and then you will see the recorded uh, lecture today's lecture. So you can actually follow the, the what I did. Uh, any questions so far? Okay, All right. That's it for today. Uh, again, uh, please stop by and work. You are you are so welcome to work in the maker space and then use those desktop computers. And uh, probably uh, that will <laughs> uh, that will help a lot for your project. All right. Okay, that's it for today. And then let's see next Monday. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Mm -hmm.